Hi, I'm Corey Weatherton. I'm Director of Product Development here at Jayco Motorhomes, and I've got something super exciting to show you today. It's the 2024 Jayco Greyhawk, and the floor plan is the 29MB. This is one of our more popular floor plans, so we figured we should get a video of this unit. So first I want to point out what makes Jayco Jayco, specifically on our Class Cs. What are we doing different than the competition? Where are we spending money that they're not? And how does that impact you as a consumer? First and foremost, I want to point out this one-piece fiberglass front cap. We've been doing this for a number of years, folks, and we do it specifically for a reason. On our Class Cs, this is the single most expensive thing we put on any of our motorhomes. So how does that benefit you and what does it do? There is a seam that runs right in this corner that we have covered up. So the sidewalls go all the way to the front, bunk platforms come all the way to the edge, and there's a seam there. That seam is a notorious leak point of water on Class C's. And so what we have done to protect your investment is we have a one-piece fiberglass cap with no seams that actually slides over and covers that seam. Now other manufacturers may claim, there's one in particular that says they have a one-piece fiberglass front cap, but the problem is is that theirs is more for aesthetic purposes. Their cap ends about right here, so this is fiberglass. It does look aesthetically pleasing, but the problem with that is they've done, done nothing to address this seam. At Jayco, we've covered that seam with this cap to protect your investment because we want this to last you a very long time. We want to protect your financial investment. We value your finances. Uh, second thing I want to point out on this is the front window. It's a panoramic window on this front cap. Uh, we started doing this in approximately uh, 2017 on our Greyhawk Prestiges, which we uh, have obsoleted. We don't make that anymore. Uh, but we install that window exactly like the chassis manufacturer installs the windshield. So we have about a quarter inch recess, three quarter inch lip. Uh, we put a, a adhesive all the way around it, a sealant around it that as it cures, it never fully hardens. And so as a result, there remains flexibility in that sealant. Same thing with this chassis, the way Ford does it, same way. Now Ford, as this chassis goes down the road, uh, that, the chassis will buff it a little bit and the windshield will flex inside of it. Same thing with our front cap. Uh, as the wind goes against it, it buffets a little bit and the, the window will flex in it. To, uh, so what that does is it means that uh, you won't get a cracked window, uh, nor will you get water infiltration. We've been doing this since 2017, so approximately seven years now. And I'll tell you, we have that design nailed flat. It is perfect. Um, other manufacturers, they have seen that. They know that it uh, looks cool, so they've started doing it. But we're the pioneers of that. Now, some of you may say, oh, Grandpa had a Class C, and it had a window in it, and it just leaked. Folks, we want, like I said, we want to protect your investment. That's why we give you this cap. And in the same way, we're protecting your investment by this automotive bonded process to where back in the day, uh, 20, 30 years ago, the way they would install windows up there is they just cram a router in the front, route out a hole, stick a window in it that had visible seals around it. The UV rays would break that, excuse me, bake that, and it would break the seal. And as a result, water would get in that front cap. We want to make sure we protect your investment so it does us zero good if we give you a cap that protects your investment but the window leaks. We've got that thing mastered. I tell you, it won't leak. Um, on top of that, we also give you a two-year warranty here at Jayco. It's a two plus three warranty. Industry standard is a simple one-year limited warranty. Uh, we double that. We give you two years. Uh, it's limited by 24,000 miles. It's limited by uh, we will not warranty a full-time rental coach or full-time living coach. And then finally, also, uh, we don't warranty customer neglect or negligence. So it is the most comprehensive warranty in the industry, double the industry standard. All righty, so we are inside the 29MV Jayco Greyhawk, and this is a great floor plan. Really, for a number of years, this has been our best-selling floor plan. Recently, the 30Z, if you want to see kind of the inside secrets, the 30Z recently overtook this 29MV as our best-selling floor plan. So this is still a very strong number two. Now that we're inside the coach, I want to talk about some things in the front of the coach first and foremost. As I mentioned, uh, this is the E450 chassis, and uh, we are utilizing a Sony infotainment unit. So infotainment unit, that's kind of an industry lingo. What is that? Sony radio is what we're using. It does come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and it is a very large screen. Uh, recognize that we are using a Sony. That's one of the key things. I want to point out Sony. It's a name brand. Uh, a lot of our competition is moving to an off-brand. 
a couple off brands, but we take pride in making sure that we're using really the best components as possible because we know our name is on the line. So we are using a Sony infotainment center. It does come with a free Sirius XM trial. So I want to encourage you to go ahead and try that out. I use it in my truck all the time and I absolutely love it. You might as well. Uh, within this coach, you will notice behind me this, uh, this weird thing. What is this? Are we at a zoo? What's going on here? This is our safety net. Uh, I call it a child safety net, you know, assuming kids are going to be up there a lot, but maybe an adult safety net or maybe a box safety net. Uh, we started installing these, I believe, in 2023 model year. Uh, this comes with a coach. You don't have to use it. It does attach uh, down below here in this, uh, in this hook and then overhead the seat belt there. Uh, you may walk in and see just the seat belt things. What is that? That's our safety net. So those are rated at 250 pounds. We include that with every unit just to give somebody peace of mind if they're sleeping up there that they're not going to be rolling out in the middle of the night. Front overhead bunks rated at 750 pounds. You know, that's one of the things that allows us to do a two-year warranty when everybody else is a one-year warranty. The industry average for front overhead bunk ratings is about 450 pounds. So we give you really close to twice that capacity. 750 ever be up there? I don't know, but at the same time, we wanna make sure that this thing is built strong and secure for you as a customer. So you do get a lifetime of use out of it. Uh, as I mentioned, we do have the uh, front automotive uh, panoramic window. That is controlled over here with just a simple push of the button. I can have my shade go up, my shade go down. You know, During the evenings as the stars are starting to come out and the sun's setting, I can open that up and enjoy the beauty of creation. At the same time, middle of the day gets hot, I can go ahead and close that and it helps keep heat out. You will notice in this motorhome that this is a jackknife, jack, excuse me, jackknife, how about I learn how to say that, sofa. We can option theater seats in this. If you do option theater seats, it, they will be powered. They do run off your inverter. Now, there's a center armrest with a place for remote controls inside that armrest and also cup holders as well. Your call on how you want to order this or if it's at a dealer's lot, go ahead and get it as is because you'll love it either way. You'll notice that within the overhead cabinets, new for model year 24, we have increased the cabinet door size and then also drawer front size. So what does that do? It reduces visible styles. What's a style? A style is a face frame. So uh, in a lot of RVs, motorhomes, the center section, this style is very visible. It doesn't look like modern cabinets at home. So for this model year, we wanted to oversize our doors and drawers to give it a little bit more of a residential feel. And you know, quite honestly, it does take the cost up a little bit, but we feel like the aesthetics of it definitely helps with uh, justifying that cost. You will notice that we do have nightshades. Uh, these nightshades are great from the standpoint of, I am able to close these, complete blackout. We do go wider than a lot of our competitors, so there's not a, a potential to be standing in the wrong location and somebody's walking by and just catches a glimpse, uh, but we do have those uh, nightshades and, and they are the roller shades. So perfect for this scenario. Moving back to the dinette area, what you cannot see is we have a seat belt in both of these seating locations. So two in the forward facing, two in the rear facing. So with that, you can seat belt safely in here, two, four, six, eight people. This motorhome will seat belt safely eight people. And then you do have two child tethers in the force, uh, forward facing dinette. So we want to make sure there's seat belts everywhere. We're the only manufacturer that has a seat belt in every seating position as standard. There is a manufacturer that you can option them in this area or even option them in the sofa. We give them to you standard simply because we know it's the right thing to do. This dinette is uh, unique to us. We used to use a type of dinette that there was a lever at the end. You flip it over, push it down, lock your lever in place. Same thing. Unlock it, bring it up, lock it. The problem we found with that style is that with time, you'd go to lean on the table or maybe you'd put your, your big Thanksgiving turkey on the table and it'd drop down about an inch to inch and a half. We didn't like that. We felt like it was a little bit weird. It constantly needed adjustments. So we switched to this about three years ago and we absolutely love it. I can put, I can put anything heavy on here that I'd like. That Thanksgiving turkey that I mentioned, totally fine on this and it's secure. Now I personally, wouldn't sit on it, but at the same time, I can put food on there and not worry about it dropping down. To turn this into a bed, I simply lift up at the end and then pivot it all the way down. Once it's all the way down, I can move the cushions over the top and it's not going to have a danger of coming up simply because there's a gas strut in the all the way down position 
it takes the pressure off of that strut. To bring it up, I simply lift it up and then it locks into place on the wall. So super easy to use and we absolutely love that. Um, so uh, as I mentioned on the outside, this unit has been optioned with dual ACs to 13,500 BTUs. And here in a second, I will show you how those function when we flip sides and I go to the back of the coach. This is a power control system. This power control system is the brains behind the electrical system within this coach. This is a 30 amp coach and a 4,000 watt gasoline generator. That gasoline generator is plumbed to your chassis, so it's pulling fuel from your chassis. Kind of, kind of the common thought is within a 30 amp coach, you cannot have dual air conditioners. Now standard in this coach is a single 15K with a heat pump, and that's always up front. I love the heat pump from the standpoint of if I live in the northern climates, um, in the summertime, a single 15K for me is sufficient. But I love the heat pump because in those cooler faller, cooler fall mornings or cooler spring mornings, I'm able to utilize the heat strip inside of this to heat my coach if I'm plugged into shore power. So I can conserve my propane and I don't have to fire up my RV furnace inside of this. So that if you're living in the northern climates, I'd really encourage you to consider a single 15K with a heat pump. There again, that choice is yours. If you're hot-blooded, cold-blooded, you know that answer, so you know if you need one or two. But when we option with two, it's dual 13.5s, you lose the heat pump. How do we pull that off in a 30 amp coach? Like I mentioned, it's courtesy of this. Your front air conditioner is priority number one. Your rear air conditioner is priority number two. The rest of the coach is priority number three. So it's a hot day and both air conditioners are calling for air conditioning. And this thing will prioritize so that the first air conditioner that turns on is my front one. Once I get that initial surge from my compressor and it comes back down, my rear air conditioner will turn on. There again, I'll have that surge, it'll come back down. I'm fine running anything in this. However, this thing is smart enough to know that this microwave is probably using around 1600 watts an hour. Uh, it's Friday night, it's time for microwave popcorn. I open the door, put in the microwave popcorn, hit start and automatically that knows it and it shuts down your rear compressor. It, it makes my popcorn, pops it all up. The bag is nice and full. We're smelling it in here. It dings. This senses that. It cycles through. About 30 to 45 seconds later, it turns on my rear air conditioner again. So this power control system accomplishes a lot for us as a manufacturer. And I can tell you the reliability of this, it's very good. That's not really ever something I hear about in warranty claims. Now, I will tell you that... Uh, that it is a great feature and it comes in any of our Greyhawks, regardless of if you get the dual ACs or not. So in the future, uh, you maybe get a 15K with a heat pump and uh, you want that second air conditioner, that is still in here. So we are always gonna wire it for it. So I wanna point that out. That's how we're able to accomplish it. Why do we give you a 30 amp coach instead of a 50? I'll be totally transparent with you. A 50 amp coach is gonna cost more money to manufacture simply because the gauge of wire is larger and there's more copper in that and et cetera, et cetera. So your upfront cost is more expensive. But then also, once you take ownership of this, you've maybe paid a little bit more on the front end because it's a 50 amp coach, you will go to the RV park and hopefully they have a 50 amp service there. If it's a smaller mom and pop, they may not have 50 amp, only 30 amp. And so you're not able to take full advantage of that 50 amp, or maybe it is a 50 amp park and you have to pay a little bit extra for that premium site, it's gonna cost you more on the back end. So we feel like we're able to accomplish everything we need to accomplish with a 30 amp coach, and we're trying to do it in as financially responsible way as possible. So can uh, residential size microwave, we've got our RV oven, we've got a three burner cooktop, both of these are propane, whereas this is obviously electric, this will run off of your generator or your shore, shore power. Moving back, we have a super large refrigerator. This is a 15 cubic foot, uh, 12 volt refrigerator. So we do have a travel lock on it. And so we simply just open it up and it's a lot like your refrigerator at home. You have your refrigerator on the right and then on your left, you do have your freezer. So a coach this size, this is a large amount of room. And we have switched to these 12 volts just in this model year 2024. And we've done it we we're kind of, we we're late getting into the 12 volt game. And in reality, that was on purpose, simply because we felt early on, 
we were questioning the reliability of 12 volt refrigerators, the efficiency of them on and on. Uh, once they got to a place that we felt comfortable utilizing them, we switched to them simply because they cool down a lot quicker. Also, they use less fuel, if you will. These, are, uh, these will run off of your two house batteries on this coach. And so going down the road, it will cool down going down the road. When you're plugged in at the RV park, it's power that you've already paid for by running that campsite. It is cooling down. And so we love this. Also, in, a, in the prior gas electric refrigerator, the cavity that that refrigerator fit into was almost the same size as this, but simply because we've gotten rid of the, uh, the copper LP lines and, and uh, other components for that dual refrigerator, we're able to get a larger refrigerator in almost the same size cavity. So we love this 15, 15 cubic foot refrigerator. We feel like it's a great size for this coach. Moving back further, we have a notorious split bath shower. Uh, you may, if you're new to RVing, you may look at this and say, that's just kind of weird. This is a glass door. It's not even uh, opaque. It is clear glass. Somebody could be sitting at the dinette watching somebody shower or somebody back in bed watching somebody shower. Folks, that's not what we intended, all right? Uh, this has complete privacy simply because overhead here, you'll see this magnetic catch. I can open up this bathroom door and it catches there for complete blockout privacy of this shower. And then also back here in the bedroom area, I can block that off uh, by this uh, sliding door here as well. And so I can shower in complete privacy without feeling like I'm the spectacle of the show. So what I love about this is simply that when both doors are closed, I've got a hundred inch wide bathroom all of a sudden. And so I can take my shower, I can get out of my shower, I can dry off, I can put my clothes on and not feel like I'm constantly bumping into the walls or, or just this tight enclosed space. And so this is great feature. I personally love it. It may not be for you. Uh, we have a demo fleet here at Jayco that we get to use periodically during the summer if we check them out. I took this floor plan out a year ago with my family and I love this setup just because it is very large. Also within our bathroom, you'll notice that we have a very large bathroom window inside of that to let a lot of natural lighting in as well as a lot of countertop space and a medicine cabinet so that you're able to just maximize the time that you're in this room when both doors are closed and uh, not feel like you're crunched on space. Moving further back into the bedroom, you're gonna notice inside of this bedroom that we do have uh, um, uh, two wardrobes. So we've got one side over here and then we've got another wardrobe on this side. Great thing about this is just simply that there's plenty of room uh, for a his and hers, his and his, hers and hers, or just his across the board or hers across the board. Plenty of wardrobe space with a shelf above, a bank of drawers in the center, and then two drawers down below. Also, we do have a television inside of this floor plan, and you'll see we have a lot of storage down below. Coming back into the bedroom more, full bank of overhead cabinets. Not only overhead cabinets, but you will see wireless charging ports on both nightstands as well as a USB port if you do have an older phone or a tablet you're wanting to charge. Overhead reading lights, right now they're in the reading, um, reading light mode. I can just click it once and I get mood lighting or maybe a night light and then turn it into a reading light. So an egress window in the rear and then something to note is in our slide room, we do have uh, cross windows for ventilation. So you're gonna be able to stay cool or warm just depending on how you like it. 120 volt outlet uh, in the bedroom here and then also a wireless clicker to control my interior lights. This whole coach is controlled by a BM Pro multiplex system. So on that, it means I can control my slides, I control my awning, I control my lights, my, my HVAC, a lot of things I can control. I can download an app to my phone and I can control it from my phone if I'm out at the campfire or I'm inside, I can use these wireless remotes or I can use the BM Pro screen itself. That's new for 2024. A lot of you were requesting a little bit more technology in our Greyhawks, so we added that and our customers are really liking it. So uh, we think that this has been an incredible floor plan throughout the years and we continue to build upon that, that base solid foundation to give you where we are at today. So Corey Weatherton, Director of Product Development for Jayco Motorhomes, get out to your local dealer and look at this floor plan. Look at our Greyhawks. Maybe a Greyhawk isn't for you and you want to look at a Redhawk or a Redhawk SE. Go to Jayco.com, find who your local dealer is, 
look at our product and we think you'll fall in love with it. From the ride and handling aspect, from the amenities that we're giving you, from that one piece seamless fiberglass front cap, we are giving you more than the competition. If you have technical questions, you want to know tank sizes, propane sizes, and you can't find those things online or, or your salesperson doesn't know, always feel free to call us here at the factory. The receptionist who answers the phone will ask what state or province you're from, and they will direct you to the regional sales manager that's responsible for sales in your territory. And they would love to talk with you and uh, answer any questions that you do have. Thanks for watching this video, and make sure you get out to your dealer and check out the 29MV Jayco Greyhawk.